share some of the testimonies that have come in this week before I, before I get started. In our season of prayer and fasting and seeking God for souls, every week God is faithful. And I want to, again, encourage you, share your testimonies. Let's, let's together brag on what God is doing, testify of his goodness. Amen. I want to share, there was a, a brother, he's been clean now, sober, been an addict for all of his life. I think he's around 40 years old, and so here he's been clean now for about three weeks, and if you do the math, you'll figure out this started, amen, give the Lord a praise clap. And this is huge. If you know this young man, he has been in and out of rehab, I think, at least three or four times through the years. Been unable to hold down jobs, uh, lost a marriage. There's been a whole lot of things that's been cyclical, this pattern just repeating itself. So to God be the glory that the last three weeks he has been clean and sober. There's another brother, uh, his back was healed during this, had some back pain, back issues, and word that he might have to have surgery, but God has healed his, his back. Uh, I shared this one uh, Wednesday night a little bit. Uh, a lady in our church, pretty profound word, but had a, a dear friend, their, their baby was sick and to death, and the baby did die, and, and it troubled her spirit, and she said, you know, initially she was frustrated with God, felt like God had let her down and let the family down. But she began to see that God, God showed the health situation, the things that this little child was going through, that God had delivered this child, just maybe not the way that you and I might think. But God began to minister to her heart and speak to her about what he's doing in spite of these and, and, and how God's plan. The Bible says his ways are above our ways. His thoughts are not ours. How many of you know that God has a perfect plan? You've got to know that even when you don't understand it. You have to believe that even when you can't see that. The proof is this, that as a father myself, I can assure you I've never had any plans to harm my children. All of the plans that I have have been for their good. But if you were to ask them from their perspective, there are times where they just feel like I'm trying to take all the fun out of life. Where, where I'm just trying to tell them what to do or as they say, boss them around. But from their perspective, they don't see the Father's heart. They don't, they don't understand. I see a bigger picture. And I want to tell you this morning, God is the same way. God doesn't have any intentions to hurt you. The Bible says he has plans to prosper you, to bless you, to give you a hope and a future. So I want you to know, no matter what you're going through, that God does work all things to the good of those. He's able to take situations that you feel are bad and still turn them into something great for his glory. There's another... Uh, a friend in here that's been cancer-free for over a year now. This cycle started last year in our prayer and fasting. God brought them through their battle with cancer. And that was last year in prayer and fasting. And this year, they sent me a message and let me know, Pastor, I'm still one year clean, one year still cancer-free. To God be the glory. Uh, this is, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, I'm trying to read my own writing here. There's one that had uh, prayer for a job, praying for a job. They were about to quit their job. Said, God, you got to give me wisdom, praying that the Lord, they needed more money. And they'd been working here for a long time, felt like they were uh, just not, not being, I don't want to say treated fair, that's probably not the right word, but felt like maybe they were being underappreciated. And so they had went in and planned to talk to their boss, and before they could, this is what it says, they got a promotion and a raise. I said, I was praying about it last week and trying to figure out what to do. And I went in, they, they gave me a promotion and a raise. And then before the end of the week, they started talking about another position they wanted to train them for, which would entail another promotion and another raise. All that within a matter of a week, amen, to God be the glory. I got two of those testimonies similar to that this week. Uh, another one that uh, prayed for their daughter to come to the Lord uh, and and. Last week, they were with them, gave their life to the Lord. Last week, we had another answer to prayer this past Wednesday. 
as a young woman, gave her life to the Lord then, I, I was realizing these last few weeks, God has brought more souls in in our season of prayer and fasting than any other year before. Uh, I've got one more. This one is uh, very powerful. As a brother in the church, he had uh, really been going through a tough season. Got laid off from a job last year, started a new job. And they haven't hired him on yet, so he doesn't have the full benefits yet. One of those temp things or whatever until they can hire him. And so he's been praying. God, he said, Pastor, I need a breakthrough financially. We're, we're struggling. Things have changed. And so his employer last week called him in and said, here's the deal. We can't hire you just yet. We're waiting, but we don't want to lose you. We really want you. And so what we're going to do, since we can't hire you, is go ahead and give you a $2 an hour raise in the meantime until we can hire you. To God be the glory. Amen. But then it gets even better than that. They got uh, uh, another testament. It's very similar to the other one. Said that last week, they said, you do realize that the only way we'll be able to hire you is that you have to have this specialized training. So we're going to go ahead and start training you in this position so that when we do hire you, we'll hire you for that position, which will then mean more of a pay raise and a full-time position with benefits and all that stuff. Give God a praise clap this morning. <laughs> the last one I want to share with you, sister shared it with me Wednesday, and some of you were here at the end of service. You, you, uh, the Holy Spirit began to move after, after service, and uh, she went to shouting, but she's got good reason. She said, Pastor... Uh, for a couple of weeks, my sister has been sick unto death. They actually had told them to call the family in that she probably wouldn't make it through the night. And she said, we began to, to, to pray together as a family. Of course, we've been in this season of prayer and fasting. But last or earlier this week, she said, they, they said, call the family and she probably won't make it through the night. Get there the next morning. She's up and awake and hadn't been, all the, the fever, the infection that was in her bloodstream is gone instantly and overnight. She went to shout and win tonight. She said, my God's a healer. My God's a healer. What a testimony. God is a healer. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me this morning to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. We're going to be again with verse 14 this morning. Then we're going to flip over to the book of Mark. Matthew chapter 17, begin with verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. Oftentimes he falls into the fire and into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer? You bring him to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart, saying, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say to you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not but out but by prayer and fasting. I'm going to stop here for a moment. You can go ahead and flip over to Mark chapter 4, if you will. I've preached this message before many times in our as we enter our season of prayer and fasting, but I was looking at this the other week and noticed something there that I, I really, the Holy Spirit gripped my heart and wanted to share with you. We said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. Faith is a grain of mustard seed. You'll be able to speak to the mountain. That problem, that obstacle, that thing that's unmovable, that impossibility, that impassibility, that thing you can't cross, that, that thing you can't get through, that thing you can't get over. He said, you'll tell it to move and it'll move. It'll be cast into the sea. It'll respond at the word. And nothing will be impossible to you. Just to give you just a little idea on the, uh, on the setting here. There's a man that, that hears that Jesus is in town. He, he comes to his disciples. He's got a child that's sick to the point that this epilepsy or these seizures or whatever they are that causes him to fall into the fire and he gets burned. His child gets hurt or falls into the water and he's worried that he's going to drown. That's a desperate situation for a parent. I want my child to be healed. 
He comes to Jesus' disciples and, and they pray for him, but he doesn't get healed. The man comes to Jesus and Jesus casts the demon out and the, the boy is healed from that very moment. I love the fact that his disciples then come to him privately and they said, now, now tell us, why couldn't we cast it out? That always gets my attention because I, I've come to realize that our faith is so little we don't even expect miracles anymore. We don't question it when, when miracles don't happen. We just, well, you know, we try. But the disciples, they, they, quit. they said, I don't understand. We, we've prayed for others and seen them get healed. And, and we've prayed for others and we've seen the power of God show up. So, so why wasn't we able to see this miracle? And Jesus said, because of your unbelief, I tell you, if you had the faith as a grain of mustard seed, nothing would be impossible to you. Howbeit, this kind comes but by prayer and fasting. I, I want to look at something this morning, Mark chapter 4. The title of my message today is Mustard Seed Miracles. I believe that God is doing miracles. I, I believe we've already got some of those testimonies, but I believe that God's doing a new thing in your life. I believe there are more miracles in the making. If you have the faith, say that faith. faith. If you have the faith as the grain of a mustard seed, nothing would be impossible. In Mark chapter 4, beginning with verse 26, and he says, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground. Let me stop there. So is the kingdom of God. I want you to flash back for just a moment. In the Lord's Prayer, he says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the Lord's Prayer, when they asked him to teach him how to pray, basically Jesus says to them, he said, When you pray, pray like this. Pray that the kingdom of God, the power of the kingdom of God would come down and manifest even here on earth. Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. Remember, Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. He then goes on to tell you and I that all authority has been given to us, that he gives us all authority. He says, greater things than he did shall we do because he goes to the Father. Are you with me this morning? What I'm telling you is that miracles should still be happening. We should expect miracles. We should believe that the kingdom authority operates even here on earth just like it does in heaven. When we, when we come to God, when we align ourselves with the power of God through covenant, when you begin to live in covenant with God, when you get your life in alignment with this word, he says, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. When you align yourself up with the word of God, you can begin to believe God for the impossible. Mark chapter 4, let me get back to this. Mark chapter 4, verse 26. So is the kingdom of God as, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up and he doesn't even know how it happened. For the earth brings forth fruit of herself. Let me stop there. He said the farmer puts seed in the ground and whether he goes to sleep at night, he's not worried about whether it's going to produce whether he goes to sleep or he goes to work, once he's, once he's put it in the ground, he can't do anything else about it. Amen? Amen? And when it comes up, he doesn't even understand how it happened. All he knows is that this thing really does work. I, I put this seed into the dirt, and that doesn't make sense because that seems foolish. Well, well to you and I, it may not sound so foolish, but, but what if, what if I said, I want you to take all the money you've got in the bank and I want you to go outside and bury it in the yard. Now, Pastor, that's just dumb. <laughs> but see, the concept's just the same. Back then, their, their currency was, was the produce that God would give, whether it was the livestock or whether it was the seed they'd put in the dirt. God, you're asking me to take everything that I own? Because I can, I can eat the seed. I could go sell this. I, I could sell it to another farmer. Yeah, but once you get back whatever you sell it for, or once you devour it and you satisfy your tummy, you don't have anything left. If you want there to be a future, if you want there to be a harvest, you've got to trust God with what you do have. 
So the farmer puts it in the ground. He, he walks away from it. He can't worry about it anymore because either God's in it or God's not. He can stress over it. He can lose sleep. But whether he sleeps or whether he's awake, the earth, what it is, God, God does what only God can do. And when God does what only God can do, the farmer is left speech and says, I don't even know how it happens. I just know that God is faithful. For the earth brings forth the fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. And when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. And he said, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? In verse 31, I want you to key in on this. He said, it's like a grain of mustard seed. Say mustard seed. Mustard. It's like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up. When it's planted, it grows. And becomes greater than all the herbs and shoot out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. Now, I want to show you just a few pictures this morning because oftentimes, and, and I believe it's all right to, to use the mustard seeds that we have in the store as a good illustration. They're awfully small, but it's really not the mustard seeds that you and I are familiar with. Put, put those pictures up there for me, that first one. This is... A mustard tree in Israel. This would be the, the type of tree that Jesus is referring to. And this tree grows pretty large. But you can see those beautiful yellow flowers. And you can see like almost in the dead center there's just a green bud that, that hasn't sprouted the flower yet. That green bud will... Pop up just like any tree in your yard. It will bud and then it will begin to bloom with whatever flowers and then those little brown things are what's left when the flower withers away. All that's left is that little green piece again and then it begins to wither and turn brown. Put, put that next picture up. And those are the seeds. Again, you can see on that stalk, you can see the green buds. You can see... One that's furthest to the broken stem that's already dried and withered. And those seeds laying in the hand, much smaller than a regular mustard seed. And put that last picture. Do you see how tiny those are? He said, I tell you, if, if, if you had the faith as a grain, as one of those tiny little crumbs, if you blew it like that, they'd all go flying. Said, I tell you, if you had the faith as a grain of mustard seed, you'd be able to speak to that situation that you've been unable to pass and to conquer. <laughs> that thing you've not been able to get through, not that thing you've not been able to get over, that thing you can't see beyond. So the tree produces buds, blossoms, and then they wither. A little bit of teaching this morning. You see, in that withered state, it's in that withered state that the seeds are realized. It's in that withered state that, that you begin to recognize that there is the potential beyond what you see. It's in that withered state that the seeds of faith are produced. Oh, somebody, you're not getting it. It's easy to have faith when everything is blossoming and everything is beautiful. When, when everything is perfect, you, you don't really need faith. Do you ever notice how easy it is to have faith when everything's going right? But it's when things begin to wither. It's when things begin to die. It's when things begin to shrivel up and it doesn't look like there's any hope and there's no future left. It's in that moment that faith is produced. I know that, I know that nobody wants to have to go through a storm. But it's through the storm that our faith is lifted up. Everybody wants to see the miracle of God, but nobody wants to be the one that needs the miracle. Yeah. I want to shout when you get your miracle, I, but I don't want my baby to be sick in order to tell you how good God is. I don't want it to be my sister. You want to know why that woman was shouting on Wednesday? Because that was her sister. It wasn't your sister. That's why we can clap. Praise God. That's good. That's wonderful. 
It's when everything dries up that the seeds of faith are revealed. It's there that they are produced. And he said, I'm telling you the truth. If you had just a little bit of faith, like that of a mustard seed, like that little tiny grain of a mustard seed. God's doing something mighty in you. Look at somebody this morning and tell them, God's doing something big in your life. When everything looks like there's no more hope left. And Pastor, I've prayed until I can't pray anymore. I feel like my faith has withered down to nothing. Pastor, I've been believing God and expecting God for so long, I don't even know what the point is anymore. See, when everything's going good, you don't need faith. When it begins to wither away, you start saying, well, God... Maybe this is my lot in life. Maybe this is just the way that it is. But it's in those moments of desperation. It's in those moments of desperation that we come to God and we say, God, I need a fresh touch. God, I need a miracle. We begin to cry out in, in, in desperate hopes. And, and, and we don't feel like there's much left. But the reality is it's there that faith is opened up. Let me meddle a moment. The truth is, when my child was sick, I prayed for her like I have never prayed for her in all my life. Now, if I reflect today, 14 years later, I, I tell you, I should have been praying for her while she was healthy. And I suppose I did to some degree, but I promise you, I didn't pray like I did when she wasn't healthy. I'm ashamed and a little embarrassed, to be honest with you, this morning. I pray for them now, but I don't pray for them today with the fervency and the passion that I prayed for them when everything had withered and dried away, when the doctor said there's nothing else they can do. That's when, that's when the faith was revealed. And I wondered in that moment, God, I don't have any faith. You, you've waited till everything's shriveled down and I don't have anything left to give. The only reason I'm praying now, God, is because I have no other place to turn. Is it okay to be honest? It's when everything shrivels down to nothing and you're coming to God, it's there that the seeds of faith, he says, I'm telling you, if you just so much as had that little bit of faith, because in the normal, you don't have that kind of faith. In the normal, you just praise God and you, and you pray, but, but you don't really expect. It's when you get desperate and broken and you've got no other options that you say, God, if you don't come through, I've got nothing left. It's in those moments where the devil begins to whisper in your mind, you don't even believe. Well, it doesn't matter if I believe now. I don't have any other place to turn, and the reality is the devil's a lie. You want to know why you're still calling out to God even when you don't have any other place to turn and you feel like you don't have any faith? Because you do have faith. Amen. Because just maybe, just maybe the same God that you read about in this word is still the same God today. But you feel like there's no faith left, God. And I know, I know that my faith isn't what it should be, God. But you're all that I've got. I tell you the truth. If you just had the faith as of a grain of mustard seed, you'd be able to speak to your mountain. And it would respond. It would obey. And it'll be cast into the sea. And nothing shall be impossible to you. Howbeit this kind comes out by, by prayer and fasting. Sometimes the only way that we get that type of faith before everything turns dead, before everything feels hopeless, is to draw near to God where God begins to give you a glimpse of heaven inside your spirit where there's, there's hope revived. There's a fresh fire. Has anybody ever been close to God? Where God was stirring something in your spirit? And you were excited. You, you, were, you, you weren't so desperate as in a knee. You, you were desperately hungry for God. There was something stirring in your spirit. When we began to fast and pray, we draw nigh to God. He said, I, if you had the faith as of a grain of mustard seed, yes, it's small. Mm -hmm. But here's what I've come to realize. A seed that's never sown never produces anything. 
Let me say that again. A seed that is never sown never produces anything. I believe this morning that God is still doing some mighty things in the lives of the people at this church. This envelope is full and bulging with the needs, the expectations, the, the seeds of faith. But a seed that's never sown will never produce anything. It has potential. It has possibilities. It, it can be something. Your life, the miracle that you need, it, it has potential according to the word of God. It, it can come to pass. Your life can be productive. Your finances can be healed. Your marriage can be restored. Your miracle can happen. Do you believe that? But a seed that's never sown, never produces anything. Jesus said, I'm telling you the truth. Unless a seed falls into the ground and dies, it cannot live. If you have the faith as of a grain of mustard seed, that little tiny seed, nothing shall be impossible to you. It doesn't look like much, Pastor Mark. Just look at one of those little specks. Just, just find one that's kind of by itself. It doesn't look like much. What you see is not the reality of what it will be. You see an oak tree, you don't, you don't see a seed. But when you saw the seed, you didn't see the oak tree, did you? When you, when, you, when you see your prayers laid out on one of these little slips of paper, it doesn't look like much. But I'm telling you, what you see isn't the reality of what it is. But you only get to that point after it's been through the process. How many of you want to see the miracle of God? So now I'm going to teach and preach a little bit. In order for it to become what God's created it to be, the seed has to be sown. He said, when it is sown, in verse 32, but when it is sown, it grows up. When it is sown, it begins to grow. So let's talk about this. I believe God's about to do something big in your life. But in order for it to grow into what God has created and designed for it to be, in order for the miracle to come to pass, you've got to sow the seed. What does sowing mean? It means letting some things go. Look at your neighbor and say, you've got to let some stuff go. You've got to release some things. A seed that is never sown will never produce anything. So let me get real with you. Oftentimes, and I believe that an envelope is full of things that, that we have put before God, but we've not actually let it go. Pastor Mark, you don't understand. It's, it's too late for me. My season's over. The, the ship is sailed. Pastor Mark, what difference does it make at this point? The doctor's already given us the diagnosis. What difference does it make? The lawyer's already filed the paperwork. Pastor Mark, we already don't have the money. We're already six months behind on the rent. Can I tell you what God did just a couple of years ago in this church? There was a woman in our church who was a single mother. I love to share this. That there, there's miracle after miracle after miracle every year. And some are, some are just much more flashy, if you will. They're all to God's glory. But, but some of them are just mind-blowing. But a woman who was a single mother. God blessed her with a brand new home. Paid for her. So how can God do something? Her father who had passed away lived in the same neighborhood as this gentleman. And she had become friends with him just through going to visit her dad. When he died, he had no family, no one to leave it to. And the only person he could think of was her. She, she wasn't even in line for it. How can God do something like Overnight, overnight, overnight. I love to, to brag on Brother Robert Goldsberry, the one I've told you before, had, had bladder cancer. And the doctors told him, you've got to do something. And he kept telling him, I'm healed. 
See, it doesn't look like much. The doctor gives the scan. The doctor says, this is the reality of what you got. No, but you don't see what I see. See, I, I see what happens after it's been through the process. Here's what it looks like when you truly sow it and you give it to God. See, Brother Robert had given it to God. The truth is, most of us, pastor included, hadn't really given it to God. I'd taken it to God. You can take that. Listen, you can take your car to the mechanic and say, this thing ain't running right. He says, okay, well, I'll take a look at it. And you say, all right, I appreciate that. And you get in your car and drive it home. See what happens. <laughs> that sorry mechanic, he ain't fixed nothing. I've done taken the car there three times. And that sounds like a real bad story, doesn't it? But if you come back to the reality that you never left it, all of a sudden, wait a minute, well, that makes sense. A seed that's never sown will never produce anything. Amen. When you sow a seed, you, you let it go, you release it. The farmer, when he scatters the seed into the earth, he goes back and takes a nap. He says, Listen, it's out of my hands. Either God's going to step in or he's not. Either this seed's going to produce or it can't. I'm powerless to fix it. If I could fix my situation, if I could produce something out of this seed, I would have already done it. And that's the problem. Too many of us, we, we lack enough faith to actually just sow the seed into God's hands to give it to the Lord. Some of us today, we've got to learn to let some things go. What I mean, I want you to have peace. When you give it to God, I want you to have peace. There's mamas, you've, you've placed your children on those little slips of paper. But you've not given them to God. You're still trying to fix it and bail them out. You're still stepping into the middle. And the Holy Spirit showed me something about that years ago. There's only one Savior. Amen. I'm not he. You're not he or she. There's one Savior. But too often, people that we love, we, we play the part of the Savior. They call us and they need help, and so we're quick to respond. Pastor, you don't understand. When that's your baby, you'll, you'll jump to the call too. But sometimes we need to get out of the way so they'll stop looking for us and start looking to Jesus. Amen. How can you do that? Because when you sow it to God, you say, God, I believe, I believe that you can straighten out their addiction. God, I believe that you can sober them up. I'm the product of a praying mama. See, I believe there's power in prayer. I believe that you can truly sow it unto God and that God was able to do what only God can do. Yeah. I believe that God can straighten up the addict. I believe that God can straighten up the homosexual. I believe today that God can save your loved one, even the one that says, church isn't my thing. I believe that God can touch him even while you're here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I believe God can. Amen. Go ahead and praise the Lord. I believe that God can bless your finances. But some of you aren't sowing anything into the kingdom of God. Financially, there's never anything. You don't trust God. You're saying when you finally get enough, when God finally does enough for you, then you can trust him. When you, when you have enough to trust him with. If you can't be trusted with a little bit, how can you be trusted with more? But when it's sown, it grows. The outside doesn't look like much. Put that picture back up there for me. It doesn't look like much at all. And we look at that sometimes and we think, God, I don't even have anything for you to work with. I feel like everything that I had, all the hope that I had, God, any, any trust, any confidence, Lord, it's gone. It's shriveled up. But what you see, I want to keep saying this, what you see today is not the reality of what it will be. What you see today is not the end result. Even when it gets down to nothing, even when it's dried up, there's still life in the seed. Look at somebody say, there's still life in the seed. There's still hope 
in the midst of death. There's still hope no matter what you're going through. There's still life in the sea. When it looks like everything is dried up, the reality is God is covered. Do you realize that every seed has a hard shell around it? The life is on the inside. That hard shell is just what you see on the outside. God placed this hard covering around the life on the inside. What I'm telling you is that, that God's already covered the promise in your life. Some of you, you need to understand. You want to know why you're still alive today? Because God covered you when you didn't even understand what was going on. For the enemy came to steal and to kill and to destroy. You, you want to know why you got your miracle? Why, why you look at that and you say, I don't even understand how this even happened. Because God had you covered. When it looked like everything had fallen apart, when it looked like there was nothing left, when it looked like even the little bit of faith that you did have had shriveled down to nothing, it was there that you realized that God had the life, the promise on the inside covered all along. You're still in the process. That's the reason some of you made it here today. Because God had you covered when you didn't know how you were going to get back up. There's still life on the inside. God's covered that promise all along. You want to know how you're going to get your miracle? Sow the seed. Let go. Whatever you put in that envelope, let go. Let God. You've got to put it into the ground. Put it into the hands of the Lord. You've got to let it go. God, you're either going to step in or you're not. I'm going to get to this more in a moment. But in order for the, the promise on the inside to ever have life, it has to be sown and it has to be sown into good soil. Say that with me. Good soil. In Romans chapter 4. Verse 17 through 21, I want to read this. Just speaking about Abraham. Romans 4, verse 17 says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him who he believed, even God, who quickened the dead. Look, look, look at this now. God did this, the one that brings life even to the dead. That's what quicken means. And calls those things which be not as though they were. That, that God takes nothing and speaks it into something. God calls those things or not as though they were already. God said, let there be light. But there was no light. There was not even a definition of light. Webster's hadn't even been invented yet. There was no definition for light, and yet God spoke it out of nothing and created something. God calls those things which are not as though they are. Somebody, you need to understand this morning, the one that gives light, he's still God on the throne. God can take that situation in your life that is not, that doesn't exist, that is not even possible, and speak it into possibility, speak it into existence. Look at verse 18. It says, Abraham who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And be not weak in faith, and being not weak in faith, he considered not, look at this, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. They didn't have those little pills then for For 100 year old men. <laughs> Put verse 19 up there for me. I want you to look at this. He considered not his own body now dead. The factory shut down for Sarah. The factory shut down for Abraham. All he's got is this little dry seed. This little shell of a promise, but there's still life inside the shell. 
He, he chose not to see this as dead and over. He considered not his body now dead, being a hundred years old. He considered not the fact and the reality that the, the body was shut down, the womb was closed, the, the factory was over and closed for, for his wife. He considered not, he didn't even look at that. What he saw was beyond that. What I'm looking at today is not the reality of what it will be. Because the God that I serve calls those things which are not as though they were already. He speaks them into existence. This is the crossroad for some of you. You've got to stop looking at the reality of your situation. Because see, that seed, that's the truth. That's the reality. The problem is it hasn't been through the process yet. When the process is over, the reality won't be the same. When the process is over, the reality will look drastically different. He staggered not, verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. What do you mean? Even before he saw the seed come to fruition, even before he saw any of the promise of God come to life, he began to praise God. See, some of this is how you know that you've not sown the seed in faith because you still can't praise God because you're still in the valley. You're still in the storm. You still don't see the promise. Mm -hmm. Let me meddle a moment. Most of us despise rainy days, particularly spiritually. I want the sun shining spiritually. I want, I want joy and peace and happiness. And I want life all over. We despise the rainy days, but a farmer doesn't. A farmer looks forward. He rejoices at the rain. Because he understands that God is using this that makes him uncomfortable. God is using this season to bring to life the very thing that he's put before God. We have this cheesy little saying, it's cliche, but it's the truth. There is no testimony without a test. There is no Harvest without a storm. There is no produce without the rain. He said he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith and gave glory to God. In verse 21, and being fully persuaded that he who had promised, he was also able to perform it. In the NIV, verse 18 says, Abraham believed and so became. Abraham believed and so became. Let's say it one more time. Abraham believed and so became. The seed has to fall on good soil. Abraham believed and so became. Some of you don't see what I'm telling you this morning. What you see is not the end product. Abraham believed and so became. What you see is not the end product. I pray that it will be recorded in heaven. Pastor Mark believed and so became. I'm praying that some of you, it will be recorded in heaven. That you believed and so became. That you believed and saw the miracle. That you believed and you sowed that seed of faith unto God. You placed it in God's hands and, and dared to have enough faith to believe that it would actually produce something. Let me talk about the process. He said, again, when it's planted, it grows. The process of planting looks like this. Plowing, planting, and reaping. Say it with me. Plowing, planting, and reaping. And it has to be in that order. That's God's plan. It's not mine. Because, see, I like the reaping part. I don't know about you. I want to show up and I just want to glean the blessings. If I find myself in a storm, I don't have time to plow now. Are you with me? 
God, I, I, I'm in need now, Lord. I'm, I'm desperate now. I don't have time to plow and to plant, God. I, I need somebody that's already went before me and plowed. And plowed. I just want to reap the harvest. God, I need a miracle. The process. He said, if you have the faith as of a seed of mustard, just that little grain. Well, that's great if you've got that mustard seed faith. But if you never do anything with it, it will never produce When God began to speak this into my heart a couple weeks ago, I realized this is like a little aha moment. I'm like, many of us, we, we've talked about the faith that we have, but we've never done anything with it. That's like the farmer saying, look at all the seed that I've got. But he's looking for a harvest, but he's never done anything with the seed because the seed is so precious, he's just kept it. And many of you, indeed, I believe you do have faith, but the reality is you've never put that faith in God. Plowing. Planting and reaping. Plowing is prayer and fasting. We're praying for souls. And some of you, you want the preacher to do all the plowing. <laughs> Let's be honest. Amen. Pastor, will you pray for me? Sunday school teacher, will you, will you pray for me? Pastor, I'm going to sit down over here and rest spiritually. I'm gonna, will you go plow that field for me? I'll help you plow. But this is your field. The process, the process to harvest is plowing, planting, and then reaping in that order. Some of us, we, we want to plant, but we don't want to plow. And so the harvest really never produces what it was capable of because we never prepared the soil. See, I believe that a lot of us, we're, we're going to invite people to church on Resurrection Sunday, but we've not spent any time plowing. Plowing is preparatory work. Plowing is the praying and the fasting. God, I'm believing you. See, here, here's the reality that, that for us to plow, we've got to have the hope that the situation can be turned around. We... In order to plow a field, a farmer's got to walk in. He's got to see something that can be when there's nothing there. You've you got to be able to look at a situation that's hopeless and a blank slate and there is no possibility here. And you see that with God, all things are possible. You've you got to be able to look at a situation where you've got an addict in your family. You say, God, they've been through rehab this many times and they've been to so many church services. They grew up in church. You've got to be able to walk there and say, you know what? God can still do something here. I'm going to begin to plow the field by faith. I'm going to begin to pray. What do you do when you walk around and you, you look and the finances aren't there? Let me tell you what most of us do. We run in panic mode. And we try and figure out another way. What we try and do is find a shortcut to fix the problem. Because plowing is not fun. So I want to encourage you this morning. Don't stop plowing. We got a couple more weeks left. Keep plowing. Planting is the releasing. Planting is the sowing. Planting is covering the seed in faith. Let me say that again. This is, this is where the faith begins to find. When you put it in God's hands, you've got to have enough faith to leave it there. I'm going to meddle on it. I believe too often we never see the harvest because when we finally do spend enough time in prayer... We finally have plowed the field. We, we finally believed, God, that things really can change. God, I, I'm believing that my marriage really can look different. God, I, I'm, I've begun to pray. Pastor Mark, you don't know how I've been praying. And then we finally sow the seed. We, we lay it at the altar. Maybe we put it in that envelope. We've given it to Pastor Mark. We're really believing, God. But I think many times the harvest dies in the soil because we won't leave it there. We believed that God could deliver little Johnny from his addiction. 
And we left it on the altar for three weeks, and then little Johnny called from a payphone or a borrowed cell phone these days. He said, Mom, I need money. And so what we did is we ran to be the hero. Dug the seed back up. Maybe little Johnny needed money because God was finally trying to get his attention and say, listen, I'm your provider. So when you got faith, you leave that seed alone. When a farmer don't have faith, he says, I wonder what, what's going on with the seed. It's been two weeks. Maybe I should check it. You see, when it's in the soil, I can't see what God's doing. Here's what I do know. Only God can do something with it. Amen? Amen. Only God can do something with it. But when, I, when I'm not really sure that God is doing something with it, when, when God's not moving fast enough for me to see results, then my lack of faith begins to tell me, I want to dig it up and just see if it's making any progress. The, the, does it have a root yet? Has it, has it broken through the shell? God, is anything happening? And sometimes we dig up our own blessing out of lack of faith. Plowing is prayer and fasting. It's doing the work, but when you actually release the seed, you've got to cover it in faith. I love the fact that every year, and I praise God that he's not so quick as to answer every need that we put before him in this one 40-day season. I love the fact that every year I have people testify. Pastor, this was on my sheet from last year and God did it this year. We had one salvation on here this year that's been in these envelopes for the last five years. Five years. I'm not a farmer, but, but I've been around long enough to tell you different seeds take different amounts of time to germinate. One seed, weeds spring up overnight. I found you don't even have to plant them. Wherever you don't want them, that's where they grow. Weeds of doubt fill your mind. You didn't plant them. You didn't sow them there. You went to church. You, you got your faith lifted up, but you allowed those things to choke out the faith that you did have. Because somebody else's seed came up in that 40 days, but yours didn't, and you stopped. You stopped covering it in faith. What do you do when it looks like the darkness has just come over? I wish I could tell the story from the seed's perspective. Because, see, too many times we worry about what God's doing with the seed, and we, we almost take the place of that. We're so worried about what God's doing, what maybe he's not doing, what, what we can't see or what we can't realize. If I took any seed or any, any tree that had fully grown... If I had taken any one of those that had been through the process, they could tell you a story about, you know, I, I, I thought everything was all right, but one day I got covered up. I was buried. I didn't know how I was going to get out of this thing. I was surrounded by darkness. Things got so dark, I didn't think I'd ever see daylight again. And just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, it, it was like I was drowning. In order for that seed to produce, at some point there's got to be water that covers it up. But when you can't move and you can't run and you can't get out of that, and it went from being bad to worse, and it feels like now not only am I buried and I'm covered up and I can't even see my way out of this thing, now I feel like I'm drowning. Pastor, I'm going to die. Just when I thought I was going to die, I began to feel a breakthrough. Something began to shift. I, I felt it, but I couldn't see it yet. All of a sudden, I, I began to feel something calling me to more than this. God was doing something big. All of a sudden, I got a breakthrough and I could see the light for the first time. And God still wasn't through. It wasn't enough just to give me a breakthrough. No, God wanted to give me life. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I don't want to just get you through. I don't, I don't want you to live on just handouts and getting by. Amen. Listen. 
reaping. Reaping is going out with expectation. You want to know why the farmer goes out to reap a harvest? Because he expects that when he gets there, he's taking the sickle with him. Or in our days, he's already fired up the tractor. He's pulled it out of the barn. Why? He didn't go there just looking to see if anything's happened. No, he's going expecting. Can, can I tell you this morning? Expectation is the breathing ground for miracles. Stand with me all over the house. In Psalms 126, it says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weep, bearing precious seed, shall no doubt come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Look at that in verse 6. This is a word for you. You, you went out. You went down to the altar with tears. You went into this season broken. Very precious seed. You came down to the altar. Bearing precious seed. God, there are things in my life today that if you don't do something with, they'll never produce anything. And with heaviness of heart, with weeping, bringing precious seed down to the altar, the Word of God says it this way, you'll no doubt, you'll no doubt come back rejoicing with a testimony Bearing the reality of what God did with the seed that you had sown, that you had given to Him. Put that last picture up there for me this morning. I want you to see something. This is, this is what that seed looks like when it's been through the process. I know you didn't come for an agriculture lesson. This, I was an addict on my way to prison or to the grave. But Mama prayed. <laughs> oh, yeah. She never told me how many, how many late nights she stayed up worrying about me. Because it didn't look like much. It didn't look like there was a lot of hope. What you see now is what that seed looked like after the process. When I look at my 14-year-old daughter today, this is what I see, what it looks like after the process. But I'm going to be real with you. When the doctors have given me their report, I didn't even so much as see one of those little grains of mustard seed. The honest truth is I only went to God because I had no other place to go. I didn't think I had any faith left. I, I got so frustrated at myself because I thought, here you are, you're supposed to be a minister and you don't even have faith. But the truth is I did have faith. If I had no faith, I wouldn't have went to God to begin with. My faith was so small that I couldn't even see it. He said, if you have faith as of a grain of mustard seed, you'll speak to this mountain and it'll be cast into the sea. And nothing shall be impossible to you. Every head bowed and every eye closed, these altars are open. You're here this morning. Maybe you, you're at the place of giving up. I want you to come. Maybe you're in that place where it feels like everything is dried up and withered away. And I'm telling you this morning, it's there that the seeds are being produced and exposed. I'm believing that God's bringing this thing to pass. I believe what Abraham spoke, that he who made this promise is able to see it come to pass. Would you come this morning? You need prayer, I want you to come. I want to pray for you. Jesus told Peter, Satan desires to sift you as wheat. 
But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. Don't give up on the seed. You continue to cover it. You continue to cover it by prayer. Let's give the Lord a praise clap this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This misses in prayer. I'm going to read Psalm 126 one more time. It's a confirmation of what God's doing in your life. They that sow in tears shall. It's going to come to pass. It's going to happen. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They go forth weeping, bearing precious seed. They shall no doubt come again this time with rejoicing bringing his sheaves with him bringing the testimony of God's faithfulness with him Heavenly Father we love you Lord we praise you God we exalt and magnify your holy name Lord just as Abraham God began to praise you and to glorify you even before you had seen the reality of what you had produced through that small seed God so we today begin to give you praise we begin to rejoice and to celebrate your goodness all over this house, I want to speak a word of life to you. When you leave this place, you begin to declare, declare and decree. You begin to praise God for what He's going to do. This little seed, God's able to turn it into something mighty, and I've trusted you with it now, God. But some that have stressed and worried, stayed up late at night, concerned, over the what is. So just like the farmer who sows the seed, whether he's asleep or he's awake, the seed grows because it's God. It's God that brings life there. And he doesn't even understand how it works. Father, I believe today this is a word for your people, Lord. May it take root in our hearts. That we depart from this place today with the glory and the praise of the Almighty on our lips and in our heart rejoicing. We've already sown the seed, God, and that part was in tears. But I believe he who made that promise is able to bring it to pass. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to stress and lose sleep any longer. I'm going to cover it by faith every day and continue to pray prayer faith over those things that I put in your hands. Lord, bless these, your people today. Lord, as we depart from the house of God, may we do so in the peace and the power of your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. You continue to cover it with faith to believe God for the impossible. Worship with us this morning.